Hello and welcome to our travel interview here today at the Hotel Bar Moy, where we have today our special guest who represents the aviation tourism sector here in Sierra Leone. With us we have the CEO of Gambia Bird Airlines, Mr. Thomas Wazinski. Welcome. We also have a Adrian Kebit, Head of Cabin, Sue Ray, Country Director, Sierra Leone Gambia Bird, and Mr. Khalil Lakis, owner of Carl Travel as well as the general sales agent for Gambia Bird here in Sierra Leone. Welcome everybody. Thank, Thank you. you so much for taking this time out to meet with us. Uh, Thomas, tell us more about the vision behind Gambia Bird. How did you start? We started operating uh, on the 22nd of October 2012. Uh, Freetown has been from the first day part of our destination. And of course, it was a kind of a growing process. We started with one airplane, then adding early 2013 the second airplane. And right from the beginning, we had as well as the connection Banjul, Freetown, London, Gatwick. So we, right from the first, no, second day, we connected Freetown with London, Gatwick as well. And it's a growing market, and we have as well as our, our schedule adapted to the situation. So right now, we have 11 frequencies per week oh. to Freetown, and connecting Freetown three times to London. And starting the new schedule, we are close to 16 yes. frequencies per week touching ground in Freetown. So you see there's a constant grow. And, and we are convinced Freetown is a booming market, a developing market, and, and we have to be here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's such a good question that you asked in terms of Freetown being a booming market. Do you feel, what do you guys feel about the African tourism sector in general? I think we have some heavyweights here. We've got some experience in tourism um, on the continent, especially in the Western access. I mean, you mentioned Gambia, which is far along the tourism. Um, Sierra Leone, we're just developing. So what do you think about the, the boom in tourism here? About this beginning, it's been growing from day one, you know, we used to have tourism in the late uh, 90s until the war broke out. And apart from the African tourism, we had some good tourism from France and uh, some from Britain. But because of the war, everything stopped. But after the war, things had started to change and we have more, more African uh, tourism from the States, from the United Kingdom. And uh, it is growing gradually. Uh, at this stage, we are having a group uh, to operate. We are going to start very soon here. We expect them in late March, hopefully. Okay. All right. All right. So um, we're talking about the cabin crew. Tell us more about the cabin crew. Are you working with Sierra Leoneans, or are you working with people from Gambia? Or tell us more about the, your crew. So far, no Sierra Leonean. Okay. But we plan to employ. Um, as Mr. Wazinski said, we started our operation almost one and a half year ago. Yes. So we started with uh, European flight attendants. Okay. And then, uh, how to say, a demand came that, uh, let's think about what we should do if we are going to work with local Gambian um, flight attendants. Mm. And then um, it's a mixture in Banjul because we also employ Nigerian, okay. Senegalese and Gambians as well and uh, they are really doing a great job and they how to say now they know their tasks uh, yes. and they really enjoying to be a flight attendant and to work with Gambia Bird. Oh that's wonderful. So Gambia Bird is not really a low-cost airline. Tell us more about the business model. We do operate right now three airplanes, two Airbus A319, one Boeing 757, both in a two-class arrangement. So we have an economy class but a quite comfortable economy class, not compared to low-cost carrier. Mm. That means the seat pitch is quite high, so that even in economy you have a comfortable seating, even flying long range. We have in, in our Airbuses, we have a so-called premium class with a much wider seat pitch, and the middle seat is always empty, so that you have as well as the arm space available. The service is different, including the ticket price, <coughs> Are, uh, uh, compared to the low-cost carrier, we're serving drinks and food, right. depending on or, or in adaptation to the route sector we are flying. 
uh, this is basically uh, yeah, the difference between a low-cost carrier and a scheduled carrier doing such kind of business. And I think the feedback we do receive from the market since we started, especially coming back to our when we implemented our local cabin crews. Right now, you know, Africans are feeling much more comfortable having local yes. people on board, understanding their language, their habits, and something like this. Then, of course, we, we put a lot of effort in our daily business in order to keep our airplanes clean, tidy, the punctuality. We are quite known as the airline always ahead of time. Of course, we've been suffering, uh, uh, especially in last year, three AOGs. That means due to technical reasons we had to ground the airplane, which are, have been beyond our control, but as well as treating the passengers Sue can, can tell the story exactly. We, one of our AOGs has been here in, in, in Freetown and this is as well as a kind of customer care, mm. not sending the passengers back home and telling we drop your call or nothing else. Right. So right from this moment then taking care of hotel accommodation, uh, uh, providing food and drinks, even providing rebooking, refunding and something like this. And this is the difference, I think. Yeah. I think these are your unique selling points, the, make, the things that make Gambia Bird different. Sue, could you tell us a little bit yeah, more about that? Yeah, as Thomas was saying, you know, last year, unfortunately, we had an aircraft down in uh, Freetown that was AOG uh, due to a bird strike. So we have the, the problem where we had 100 passengers that were basically stranded at Lungi. Um, I don't have to tell you guys what a problem it is when you have uh, you know, a potential delay at the airport because there's no facilities mm. um, or very limited facilities. Um, obviously, Cleo and his team work with us around the clock and we, we chartered uh, the Pelican to bring them across. We then put them into various hotels. Also, Cleo and his team, we went above our course of duty. Mm. Um, and whilst it's not nice to have people delayed, we, we did look after them and within reason, we gave them everything that would make their stay more approachable mm. in the time that they had to be here. And afterwards, we had some really positive feedback, um, letters commending us on how it was dealt with um, and what we I did think for them. You know, travelers have become a lot more savvy, and because they have different um, options, it feels good to be able to uh, have an airline that you feel comfortable with and that you feel safe with. We're looking at in terms of Gambia Bird. What are your future growth plans? I heard you say that you were bringing in some new routes. I think this is the opportunity to let people know what the new routes are so we can be able to get on there as soon as possible. Not that good news. We will terminate our 757 operation by the end of March, okay. but we will keep three frank frequency per week uh, connecting Freetown to London Gatwick, which will be then served by our Airbus A319. So then we will add, uh, starting the 1st of April, Lagos, we will add oh. Douala, we will add Guinea-Bissau, we will add Conakry. Okay, <coughs> Freetown right now has then a, a straight connection to Lagos and okay, even to Douala. Okay. So this is in this round, Guinea-Bissau and Conakry are connected via Dakar. Okay. We will increase the connectivity between Freetown and Dakar as well. So there, is, there are quite a lot of challenges ahead, but we are convinced that this new schedule might, might work quite well. Hmm? So keep our fingers crossed. Huh? Definitely. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? After tourism, I think what's happening, you know, in the next couple of months with the Radisson Blue opening oh, yes. forward, I think, you know, it, it's an achievement for Sierra Leone to have, you know, Radisson Blue investing in our country. Well, that leads me into the, into the next question again. Um, let's fast forward five years from now. We have Radisson Blue, we have great hotels uh, going, Gambia Birds in full uh, operation. You might and even have our own hotel. You may, <laughs> might even, well, there we go. How do you see it in five years? So Gambia Bird may even have their hotel. Keep on going. What do you, what do you see the tourism sector? We are bringing more and more passengers. All right, <laughs> all right, more and more passengers. Excellent. Yeah, okay, from our point of view, or perspective of view, we are looking already in the opportunity in order to position one of our airplanes mm. here. Right now we are only on transit here. Okay, we have right now due to our operation one night stop, which is in, in connection with our London flight. But basically if the, if the development is like it is right now or, or growing more, 
then we, we still uh, have in mind already to position one airplane here. So that means then we have one dedicated airplane departing in the morning, so then we have a, a specific flight schedule just for Freetown. Okay. Hmm? Yeah. Of course, all other destinations will be covered as well, but as you see right now, not right now, since we started the, in the, the, this season, Freetown is our, counting on the frequencies, our major hub. Oh wow, that's good. That's really good news and promising to hear. Is there any one thing that you guys would like to leave our viewers with to remember about Gambia Bird Airlines? Just the one shot now of why they should fly Gambia Bird. Why? Because of the cabin crew. Of course, you see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, passengers are really enjoying us um, without being so self-confident. They like the service on board. We offer different services on different routes. Uh, passengers just adore our local cabin crews. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, as you mentioned, they speak their language. Uh, they know their habit. They feel much more comfortable on board. Mm. So then I just would like to offer them, please take a chance and take and be a bird more and more. Yes, excellent. We have to mention, and thank you very much, especially for right now, Mr. Abu Kamara, who is supporting us in all our issues. So we, as well as pay attention and pay a regular courtesy visit and something like this. But the support is quite, quite extraordinary. Okay, hmm? that's yeah. excellent. I think it's important. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being You're with welcome. us today. Thank you very we much. really thank appreciate you it. Much. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Adrian. Thank you, Sue. You're thank welcome. you, Kelly. Thank, thank you. you very much. Sweet Sierra Leone.